Don't shop for car insurance until you hear this one secret. Every day, insurance companies adjust their rates for one reason or another. They are constantly adjusting the prices for coverage, which means today, Company A has the best rates. Tomorrow, Company B. It's just like buying an airline ticket. How can you possibly know which company is the best match for you on any given day? Easy. Call We Speak Insurance. With their patented technology, We Speak Insurance matches thousands of consumers with the top insurance companies in America. We Speak Insurance is continuously updating the insurance companies and their formulas. Call We Speak Insurance and you'll know which insurance company is the best match for you. If you've just received your renewal, you bought a new car or moved, We Speak Insurance will connect you with the best company for you. Today, get the best match whenever you shop for car insurance. Call We Speak Insurance. 855-901-5258 Blog Talk Radio Any of the opinions expressed on About Oneness or by its guests do not necessarily reflect those of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. You are always on my It is Sunday, the 22nd of March, 2015. My name is Karen Newman, and this is the show About Oneness. We are here on Blog Talk Radio on the Enlightenment Evolution Network. This is the Sunday show of my show about oneness. I want to get straight to it. Um, We have a very special guest. He has spent 15 years of clutter busting. And if you don't know what that is, maybe you need to open that hidden drawer in your kitchen or maybe that closet you've been ignoring for a long time. But my first guest has learned uh, firsthand the intense emotional connection that most people have with material possessions and has consistently found his way of working with clients that allow them to let go 
of the internal and external clutter without delving into the psychological reasons behind the clutter. Since 2000, Brooks Palmer has been using compassion, awareness, and humor to help thousands of clients rid their lives of clutter and develop habits to keep them clutter-free. He is a best-selling author of Clutter Busting, Letting Go of What's Holding You Back, and Clutter Busting Your Life, Clearing Physical and Emotional Clutter to Reconnect with Yourself and Others. They have sold 50,000 copies and they've been translated into six languages. Clutter Busting is now available as an audiobook. He also does workshops, workshops excuse me, around the country. I'd love to welcome Brooks Palmer to the show. Hi, Brooks, are you there? Hey, Karen, and hello, everybody that's listening. It's good to be here. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this topic because yesterday, as you know, was the uh, spring solstice. So we're officially yeah. in spring all over the world, and this is mm-hmm. the time that you're supposed to throw everything out that you're that's no longer serving you, get ready for a new season of growth and opportunity. Yeah, it's it's a great time to let go. It's a great time to take a look and see what's no longer serving you. Um, with that kind of curious, you know, curious questioning, I wonder what's in my life that's, that no longer fits me physically and emotionally. And um, and that's why I like talking about it on, on the radio and writing books about it to encourage people to take a look and let go. Well, this is such an interesting subject because I, I even know my mother, when when something wasn't going well in my life when I was a child, she'd say, well, go clean your room and, <laughs> and you'll get a new perspective, you know, or clean your bathroom or something like that. So, you know, that was always, there was always this sort of idea that if, if you just sort of get rid of things that are stagnant, you can you can definitely shift the energy. But what brought you yeah. to this? subject because this is i mean this is as spiritual as anything else and it, and a lot of people say i have i have blocks i have blocks but they really sometimes don't look at you know how to how to uh how to address them and what they really are and whether they're physical and or emotional and maybe they're a little bit of both oh yeah the, it's it's a combination and, and um and i like to keep it really simple and kind you know because I think there's a lot of mm-hmm. um, self-criticism about being in that situation of having clutter and like, oh, I shouldn't have done this or I should have gotten rid of this. And, you know, as a as a culture, we're, we're encouraged to acquire but not to let go. So it's natural that, that we're going to have stuff that we're not, that we don't need anymore. And, and so that's why I like to be, um, again, kind about let's take a look and see what's there, almost like it's a mystery Let's just let's take a look and see what we can find, you know, and 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 ask questions, you know, like is this? Do I still do I like and use this? Is it? Do I love it? Is it? Is it a part of my life, and and an experiential part of my life, or not, you know, and and see what comes up. Yeah, if it's if you mm-hmm. love something, if something you know, if something really is a living part of your life, then you, then it's an easy yes. It's like yeah, I like this, but if you go. Mm-hmm. I, but well, um, you know, if you hesitate, it's a red flag that there's there's um, that there's a situation there that it could be clutter, and and, right. and so it's worth looking. You know, that was going to be my question of when is it clutter and when is it just misplaced uh, stuff? I mean, what's the difference between having a cluttered house and having a sort of messy house? Is there a difference? A uh, messy house that's not a problem. You know, that's. That just means the things that you, the things in your home you like, um, and they're just kind of not in any particular order, you know. <laughs> but but <laughs> clutter is is any are the things that that no longer um, are uh, uh, they no longer support you in your life. That they, they're more they're in the way rather than um, than helping you, you know. Like clothes that you no longer wear, maybe that you used to wear. Like oh yeah, I love this. And then, time, and then you change over time, you know, physically and emotionally. So there's clothes that right. really don't fit you in, in, in anymore and books that, that no longer do it for you or music that you're no longer interested in, you know. And, um, and it can even be people, too. People can be clutter. It doesn't mean that the people are bad. It just means um, for you they're no longer 
um, a supportive part of your life. In, in, in other words, they're 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 hindering you in some way, and and mm. so that's why you want to find out. That's why you want to take a look because because there are things that were serving us, and then we change, so our needs change. So right. we generally assume like whatever's there is still part of our life, and so you take an inventory, you know, by questioning. It's like, yeah, I guess I don't really wear this anymore or I don't use this anymore. And um, and then it becomes easier to let it go, you know, when you look at it that way. Mm. So I'm, okay, I'm your pretend client for today. And, and before yeah. we get going, let's, <laughs> because I think it's and we have a we have a caller already that's been waiting um, who oh, good, definitely good. has a question for you. So, oh, but, yeah, anybody but can before call we in, go further, yeah, any, uh, let me let me just say that any, anyone can call in and speak to Brooks if you have a question about clutter and letting it go and what is clutter or any clutter related questions. Uh, the number you can call is in the United States three four seven three zero eight. 8788, and that is the blog talk radio number for this network, the Enlightenment Evolution Network. And when you get in, it will say push one to hold your hand up, and that will let us know in the, that you're in the queue and that you have a question. Also, um, if you go to the show page, there's a Skype button above the name of the show, and you can push that, and it, the Skype will call you. So that's a free call if you want to call in. So uh, before we go any further, Brooks, why don't you give us your website and then tell people how they can contact you. Thank you. My website is clutterbusting, with an I-N-G at the end, dot com. And um, they can reach me through that website. And I work with clients by Skype. So I work uh, with people around the world. And you can find out about my books and my audio book and, and workshops on that website too. And plus there's some helpful information, some helpful videos that can... Um, Oh, perfect. Teach you about how to let go. Awesome. Okay, mm-hmm. so here, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on Skype with you. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually on <laughs> Skype right now, so that's okay. Yeah. And so, and I, and I say to you, Brooks, Brooks, my life is just a mess. I just don't know. I have clutter everywhere, and I can't seem to throw anything away. What mm-hmm. do you say to me? I'll say, great, great. It's good to know where <laughs> you're at. You know. And um, mm-hmm. and you and you're not alone. A lot of people are in that same situation, and and so I'd ask you, like, what is there? Where do you, where are you feeling overwhelmed in your life in, in particular? Like anywhere that that's really bothering you? Well, I would say personally, right now I'm in the middle of a move, and I don't know that I necessarily have time to go through everything. So I've just decided to pack everything because just for the shortage of time, and I figured I would deal with it all whenever I got wherever I was going. Yeah, so when do you, when do you need to move by? Uh, the end of the month, the okay, end of April. Okay, so you still, you still have about like um, seven days, right? Eight, six days? Oh, no, seven weeks. Oh, the end of April. Oh, that's a lot of time. Yes. I would definitely <laughs> well, encourage you. But, well, I'll say I have a, yeah. it's a lot of physical time but it's I, personally I'm so busy that it's not that much time for me sure of course and and and, and I'm glad you brought that up because it, because sometimes we don't um, go through our stuff because it seems overwhelming like I can't, there's not enough time to do it and I've seen a lot happen in short periods of time and and you know mm-hmm. you could spend an hour here a half hour there just taking like opening a box or going through a bag or you know you know and looking at one item at a time and going for you know, for you in particular, is this part of um, like? Do I want this to come with me? Is this part of the new life that I want to have when I when I'm moving mm-hmm. into my new, my new place? And and see what comes up. You know, like question everything because sometimes we assume things aren't clutter, and then upon asking, you know, you, you realize like, oh, you know. I guess I'm not really, this isn't really doing it for me anymore. But I, I definitely encourage you to do that because it's harder to get rid of stuff once you go to a place, you know. It's easier when you're packing to go through. And, and as you're packing, you know, question as you're putting, ready to put something into a box or a container, go, all right, is this coming, is, is, do I, am I, is this part of my new life? You know, do I want this to be part of my new life? Does this support me? Because you're a very spiritual person. And you're very sensitive. So 
the that sensitivities your clutter radar, and it'll tell you like, mm. you know what, Karen, this this served us up till now, but it's not it's not really doing it anymore. So let's let it go. Or yeah, this we this I'm still loving this. This feels good. And mm-hmm. and uh, as if you're trying on a pair of shoes, you know, like how does this feel on my feet? <laughs> like how does this feel? How does this feel on my life? You know. Right. And I would really encourage you to do it because, you know, even if you don't get it all done, it's just whatever you can do matters. Maybe you only have 15 right. minutes one day to do it. But you'll find that by doing it like that over time, you'll go through quite a lot of stuff and a lot of things that you're better off not having to go into a new place won't go there, you know. And that will help you really right. start fresh. So, um, well, I do have good? one whole room that I've locked up that I only use to put stuff in there that I don't know what to do about. And I can honestly say that if that room were just poof away from my house, I wouldn't even know what was in it and or miss it. You know? right. so, Karen, that's, so. that, that says a lot. That says a lot. That, that means <laughs> the chances are most of that stuff is clutter. And you really don't want it to come to your place because because clutter has such a stagnant, heavy... Um, kind of corrosive, dis- destructive effect. It it seems right. innocent in some ways because it's all just sitting there, but it has it's like a jamming signal. It it really does interfere with people's thinking and well being and sleep and health. And, and I can say that because when, when I see people let go of stuff, it's like they, there's a sense of freedom that they feel, and you can see it in their face, you know. So um, mm. it's a nice way to really kind of just clear stuff without without it being a heavy emotional ordeal either, no. So I'm very I do excited have a question. for you in that room, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I do think I'm going to be leaving that one room behind for sure because absolutely I I definitely have too much stuff in that room. And it's, again, yeah. been the – it's been the – well, I, I'll say this. If I had, if I lived in the United States, which I don't, I live in Europe, and I had a front yard, I would have had a yard sale a long time ago. But here, yeah. I live in the middle of the city, so it's just not as easy to sort of take your stuff out and spread it out everywhere and just have people kind of come and look at it and go through it. So I'm, I'm at that situation where I just feel like, you know, what do you do with it? You know, do you have? A, do you guys have even throwing out there? something away is a is a drama, huh? Do you have charities out there, yeah. like a charity that can yeah, come we do for sure. That sounds yes. pretty good. Yeah, I yeah, and then maybe some stuff doesn't have to get thrown out, but whatever. You know, there's sometimes we get caught up with the ideal of the best way to do something, but it's really like, what's the simplest thing I can do to help myself? You know, without injuring other people. You know. <laughs> So, so give me an indication of maybe the worst case scenario of what you've dealt with with someone and um, and how it, how you've helped them and what was the process and really maybe what is some of the resistance that you're having because see I'm having some resistance now just thinking of you know going through all that stuff for me that just feels so ugh. You yeah, know? yeah the not that I won't, is normal. But it's, it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it's normal to have resistance. You know, everybody has resistance. Like I go to, you know, to work with people, and initially those first few minutes, there's resistance. You know, and and it it's it makes sense. It's you know we we determine like how we feel about ourselves by our stuff. We're trained to do that. So it feels like if we let go of stuff, we let go of parts of ourselves because we we associate with our things so much. We're trained how to do that through marketing and the culture. So so we feel like, oh, if I let things go, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm losing a part of me, you know? And, and that's why I like the questioning. Like, I mean, when you look at it as a whole, it's too much. And, and everybody shuts down because, because we're not built to consider everything. We're built to look at one thing at a time. And so um, that's why when you look at one thing at a time, it becomes so much easier. And... and Oh yeah, I'm able to look at this and make a decision you now. But when you think about like you were saying, thinking about all of it, and you feel resistance, that's that's what happens when you, when you see it all. And 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 it's good it's good to go. All right, this is what's happening. I'm overwhelmed, so I'm just going to be take a nice 
simple look at a few things at a time and see what happens. And and um, and a lot can get done over over that period of time. You know. Right. So again, so with the oh, what so the are worst some of the case scenario? Yeah, right. I just because I think of that show Hoarders, and I think have you ever been in that kind of situation? Um, yeah, I hate that word hoarding. You know, it's such a intense word that uh, people. It's like it makes people feel badly. You know, so I've never seen the show. But I understand. I, yeah, well, I know. Um, it's it's a good word to describe what happens because literally, people a lot of the time they're in a situation where there's one tiny, teeny, tiny path that they can barely even fit through to get. You know, they have newspapers that stacked up all the way up to the ceiling on every. Just it's incredible. So yeah, I've seen. I've worked with a few clients that that were in a situation like that, and I remember this one guy. He, he had three floors of stuff, and every pretty much every every part of the house was used and he stacked things up um so they went to the ceiling and there were bungee cords holding things from caving in, you know. And um oh my and there and there was just this little pathway that he kind of he slept in. Like he had this comforter on the ground and he would sleep on the comforter kind of twisted because he wasn't a straight path. And um I remember going through the house during that initial tour his house, and uh, I thought, like, how am I going to help him? There's, there's just so much stuff, and he was so completely overwhelmed with it, you know. And um, and we got to the top floor, and, and he just he goes like, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed. And and I thought, okay, well, let's just start right here. So I had trash bags with me, and I and in the midst of massive amounts of piles, I just picked up an empty Diet Coke liter. You know, a bottle, and I said, "Do you need this, or can we let it go?" You know, and you know, like he had to think about it. You know, <laughs> um, I, I guess I don't need it. Then we put it in the bag, you know. And then I found an empty paper towel roll, and I said, "Do you need this, or can we let it go?" Like I, I, I wanted him to make decisions because he had he had basically given up. He was he shut down just due to life being overwhelming for him. He just he gave up, and and all this stuff around him was like a a protection in some ways. It felt like there was a security in having this bubble of stuff around him, like an insulation from the world. Yeah. So, so I, rather than just go, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of this, because that would have just hurt him. I just wanted him to start making to making decisions. So we just kept going through one thing after another, you know. And I was there for a couple months, but he really and, and he was suicidal too. He told me that before I got there, every night he used to put a shotgun in his mouth, and and he would want to oh pull the trigger, and he could never do it. So that's oh how goodness. that's how over, overwhelmed he was. He wanted to kill himself, but he still wanted to live, so he couldn't kill himself. And um, anyway, he's really happy. He's a happy guy now. He calls me like every six months, says, tells oh. me all the good things that are happening to him. But he got rid of all his all the clutter, piece by piece. You know, painstakingly looking, right. looking, questioning, and. I mean, he certainly should have given up according to what the world says, but he, he didn't. You know, he took a look, very courageously took a look, and um, and he saved it. He saved his life. He saved his, his life, and it was, it was so inspiring, and it was a wonderful experience, you know. That is, well, I, I think what, what I got out of that is that it is like you said, piece by piece, looking at everything. Does do I need this? Can I let this go? And yeah. I know you said I I know in your bio it says you, that you don't dive too deeply into the reasons. Um, but is there anything that sort of that you can lightly touch on that's a sort of a surface reason? You did say it's sort of a protection for yourself. Is it? Well, is it, is it really that, just the idea that? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's partially that. It's partially um, sometimes people come from families where they're, they're encouraged to just hold on to everything, you know, and and um, sometimes it's – right, well, a lot of it's the world. Like I was saying before, marketing tells us that we're not happy unless we have – unless we get something. We need to get something mm-hmm. to be happy. I mean, ads are right. basically somebody who's – in some kind of pain, emotional or physical, they get something within seconds and they're transformed. And you cannot be not influenced by that. Seeing the repetition of that 
for um you know for your whole life basically it's on the internet it's it's on it's in movies it's on it's on television advertising so billboards and so we're we're hypnotized into thinking we need something to be happy and people go shopping when they're sad and stores know that that's right and they spend and they spend a lot of psycholo- they spend a lot of money doing psychological research to under- to in order to manipulate us to to make um to make a Decisions in their favor, not in our favor. So that makes sense. Well, you're it's hard exactly to let go right. Of yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. It is a form. We are hypnotized by the re- repetition of the television show. Any any uh, advertisement that has a jingle that gets in your head is a form of adver- yeah. It's a form of manipulative. You know, you're you're in a way bewitched. You're hypnotized. You're influenced. Say it however you want. Uh, you're yeah. constantly just bombarded because every second of every day, you know, you're you're looking at your smartphone, and even your smartphone has advertisements on top of everything that you're trying to get to that app that you're doing. It's like ping, ping, ping in your face constantly, constantly. So maybe part of once that once you declutter, I guess, how do you stay uncluttered? I, I guess would be a, a, well, is also I, a I'll tell relevant you, question. I, yeah, my experience is um, personally and and people's experience is it's just when you really take that, when you stop like looking at the outside world and you look at your own life and you look at the things in your life and you look around the room like there are here, that you're in right now and you just, and you take a look around and you go, okay, so there's things here. I'm certain that there are things here that are no longer fitting my life. So I'm going to take a look and start asking. You know, and you go to your bookshelf, you take out a book and you hold it in your hands and you go, am, am I going to read this? You know, so-and-so gave it to me as a gift. So do I want it or can I let it go? You know, I am not. I, I, it's been sitting there three years. I think I'm going to let it go. And then you let that go and you move on to the next thing. And, and that trains you to be a lot more aware of your living space. And, and it's that awareness that, that um, awareness is a powerful powerful tool. So it, it teaches you to remove the things from your space that don't fit you anymore and it, and it and to maintain the space, to protect it because, you know, you want to keep that good feeling going. You know. And that and that's how you get right. your life back. You get your life back from the world, from ads, from what people say you should do, what governments, religions, other people, people like to tell us what to do. And, um, so it's like, all right, what do I want? And it, it's powerful to look at that. Does this, you know, as if you had a plate of food in front of you and you take a bite, does this taste good or not? Do I want to eat the rest of this or not? And that's the same feeling of when you go through anything. This person, does, when I'm with this person, do I feel good? Do I feel like um, energized and encouraged? Or do I feel like uh, put down and drained? You know, how how do they make me feel? Do I need to talk to them about that or do they need to go and and see what comes up? There's no like mm. this one thing is clutter and this and this one thing is not clutter. It's different for everybody. But you'll until you take a look. It's it's really that taking a look that that's, that reveals it to you. It's very mm. powerful. Yeah, it, well, it sounds like it because you are. You're looking at one thing at a time and you're evaluating each and every thing. Yeah, and the it's one a, thing you I can, can look say at that it as I, a spiritual oh, go ahead. process. You can look at it as a spiritual yeah. process. It's very meditative and um, because it makes you go within and, 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 and that that's, um, has a lot of benefit to it. You know? Yeah. How does it translate to... Uh, emotional emotions then because you you can be it's because it's not just you don't necessarily only have clutter in your physical life but you have clutter in your mind Mm -hmm. yeah so how do you how do you approach someone who's basically just mentally full yeah well um as we're working things come up you know people talk about certain things and they'll say um Mm -hmm. You know, I was working with this client recently, and she had all these cassette tapes of songs that she recorded maybe 15 years okay. ago that were just sitting in, in a box. And um, 
she was so initially she was like, oh, you know, I don't want to let these go because there was she didn't even want to talk about it. And I said, well, what do you want to do with them? Do you still like listening to them? And she was like, I just want to keep them in the box, you know. And um, so I, you know, we started talking more and more, and she revealed that she she hadn't been creative in a long time, that she wanted to be more creative, mm-hmm. and she was upset with herself. She kept saying, I, I should be more creative, but I'm not, you know. And I said, um, well, it sounds like these old cassettes this, of the songs that you made are, were important to you at the time you made them, but not anymore. It was a good experience, but it's, it's no longer translating into something that you care about now. And so it, it, it maybe it would be good for you to, to let these go so it would allow the space for new creativity to come in. And, and she liked the idea of that because they were – they were fun for her to write those songs back then, but um, beyond that, it, it, it wasn't something she wanted to do anything with. So she let the cassettes go, and she felt such a relief. There was such a, you know, this new space that was created for her, basically, to to enjoy her life. And so that was, you know, that was some inner clutter. That was some mental clutter that she let go of. Hmm. So you never know what comes up. I remember this client. Yeah, you had, never um, know what's clutter. Yeah, and she, she, you know, she wanted to protect those things, but they were actually hurting her. And I remember this other client. She um, had she was a very wealthy woman. She had these really, really expensive shoes. Had a special closet. She spent thousands of dollars on for the to put the shoes in. You know, like they were a shoe museum. There's so many shoes. <laughs> and um, so I thought, all right, let's let's see what we can find here. So and she didn't really want to look, you know. She's like, well, these shoes are important to me. Like, well, I'll just take a look and see what happens. So she came across some shoes, and I asked her about them, and she said, um, oh, well, I love those shoes. They hurt my feet, but I really love them, you know. So she wanted to hang on to them. She goes, I have to wear these for, like, certain business events. And I said, well, what's it like when you wear them? She goes, well, they look really beautiful, but they hurt so much, you know. But I have to wear them. So I said, um, nothing is worth hurting yourself for, you know. There's no value in doing something that's that's actually hurting you. And it helps to to see that. And and you can look at, you know, um, any situation where you're doing something that you think, I need to do this for some benefit, but but you're hurting yourself at the same time. It's really worth noticing what you're doing. To, because I mean, right. sometimes you know, sometimes you, you got to do something like somebody's sick and you got to get them to the hospital and say you're really tired. And, but it helps them. If that's a different situation. But to do something that that brings pain onto yourself, to hurt yourself in a way to get benefit is is not. There's no benefit in that. And and we talked about it, and she realized, yeah, I, can't, I don't want to do that to myself anymore. For for the benefit of what for making some people happy at a at a business dinner you know they probably don't even notice her shoes she does she thinks <laughs> it's important but it's actually hurting her and that a lot of people recognize certain things that you know activities in their lives or people in their lives or things in their lives that that hurt them and they just they've been justifying right. keeping them and they recognize. I don't want to hurt myself anymore. I'm sure everybody that right. knows me, it's a spiritual show. You know, we're very, we're all like aware, like what we want to feel good and we don't want right. to cause injury to ourselves. So that's a lot of what clutter busting is, finding the things that are hurting us and removing them. Well, you know, it's it's so spiritual. That's the, I think there's a thing where people have this idea of spirituality as something that is just sort of floating in the air, but whatever is manifest in your physical life is just as spiritual as anything that uh, you know, meditating or anything. I mean, you're, you know, we always say if you want to know what's going on in your life, look around because everything yeah. that is around you is a manifestation of your state of being. So there is nothing outside of you that isn't part of you. So every every yeah. bit of it is spiritual. So this is a very literal, practical way to address the very basic and, and also very uh, in-depth 
parts of yourself that need to be transformed and cleared. So I think yeah, it's really important work perfect. you're doing. How did you get to this? How did this come up for you? What was the, when did you say, I'm good, because I, I advertised you as the clutter buster, and I, I hope that's yeah. okay, because your books are called um, uh, clutter busting, and I said, well, if, if, if they're cutting, but if the books are clutter busting, then you must be the clutter buster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like you. that name. It's a good name. It's like a superhero. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah clutter um, buster, Brooks Palmer, to the rescue. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You can even have your own music. <laughs> yeah, I should get a theme song whenever I work with people and, and a shirt that says CB with big letters on it. You know? Oh, you cape. have to have a cape, too. Yeah, yeah cape. Okay, but please. And a mask. Yeah. Um, so oh, I, mask. I got into it by, by accident. I, I didn't really, I had no desire to be a clutter buster at all. You know, I was just like, mm. I, I did it for friends, you know, because I would go to their houses and they would complain about their the stuff in their house. and and um, Right. I had an affinity for it, like helping them through that. I just started asking him questions. I remember this one friend, I go to his house, and I wanted to sit down, but I couldn't because his couch was filled with stuff, like piled high. And um, so I said, well, can we go through this stuff so I can sit on the couch? And he goes, yeah. So we got out of the trash bag, and I just asked him about each thing. And I didn't know what he wanted or didn't want, so I just said, do you, do you need this or not? And he goes, no, no, no. And pretty much all of it went into the trash trash bag and and when we got to the bottom of the couch the springs were busted they were just caved in you know from he was a large guy so i think he sat there a lot wore out the springs so i said well can this be fixed and he goes no it can't so i said well can we let the couch go and he, he goes really we can do that <laughs> it's so funny because it was like it was it was unusable and but he he that's how powerful things are for us. It's like even in the face of like oh yeah this, I can't use this but I don't want to let it go. So I said yeah let's put it out on the street someone will take it. So we put it out on the brought it outside onto the sidewalk, and um and a half hour later we went out there and it was gone. You know, so people come by wow. with trucks and they just pick stuff up, and, and um anyway and then I helped him with some more papers and we, and. He, he got a desk. We went to Ikea and we got a desk for him and stuff. And um, he goes, you should do this for a living. And I thought, no one's going to no one's gonna pay me for this. And I can't imagine people wanting this service. And um, and he said, no, no, you should do it. So I put up flyers. And then people just started calling me, you know, just lots of calls. And wow. It, it just it happened very quickly. And, and then the books happened and... Um, this this career happened, you know, and I really enjoy it. I love helping people let go, and it's so rewarding to see people get their lives back and, and to feel that relief. Um, and so I feel blessed that, that this opportunity came, you know. So that's pretty much how it happened. Well, you really are like a superhero then. Yeah, in this area. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you are. I saw. They, I don't know if you watched the show Grey's Anatomy, but there was a just on the very recent one. One of the doctors was getting ready to do this very big operation, and she stood in the posi- the the stance of a superhero mm-hmm. for five minutes, and and one of the interns was like, "What are you doing?" And she said, "It's proven." By sign, you know, it's proven that if you stand like a superhero with your shoulders back and your head up in that stance for at least five minutes, it really raises your confidence and you have that can-do attitude. But I, I'm actually picturing you standing there like in the superhero pose. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we I have did, a couple I've heard calls. That so, oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. It is true. Oh, I yeah, actually this... looked it up after the show. Yeah. Yeah, how you stand really as, as a pretty significant effect. So how you sit and sit and stand, yeah. that's why. Yeah. So we have some calls? So I we have a we, yeah, we have a call we have a couple callers. So I, I'd like to go to the first one. I know uh the first mm-hmm. one, so I wanna Hello? Hello Hi, who's this? It's uh Jay calling from Canada. Jay from Canada. Where in Canada are you? I'm in actually Western Canada. Oh, Western Canada. Cool. So what's happening, Jay? What What do you want to talk about? 
Oh, it's in regards to a little bit of what you're discussing. I just wondered why um, that our minds are e- easily manipulated about buying stuff all the time, and and it only provides us for a very short amount of time of satisfaction. Like for example, maybe a car. I know people have cars, but what happens is it lasts for three months, and then all of a sudden, uh, they you know they're just paying for something that that lasted only for you know three months or so of you know really really being excited about, it, and it just it's just a car after that. I just wonder why um, uh, we've, we've I don't know, manipulated by uh, the uh, the marketing and everything else to have this and have that when it's not really about that. The ancients didn't have as much commercialism as we do now. I just wondered, does that technology, yeah, yeah. they're doing oh. it too? Well, who knows? I mean, back then maybe they, they had some form of advertising. Who knows? But... um. I, they, you know, it's it's a way for people to sell stuff. So it's going to happen. People want to sell things, so they they want to present it uh, and to get and encourage people to buy it. I mean, maybe people don't even need it, but they want people to buy it. So um, that it's people making money. It's it's, it's going to happen. It helps to know that because then once you start knowing that, you watch commercials and you go like, God, I can't believe. They think I'm that dumb, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just after a while, you, when you look at it, you go like, I can't believe um, what they're doing, you know. But and it, it starts to lose some of its effect on you when you really look at it this way. Yeah, but it, it's natural that that you know, we're excited about anything new that comes into our life, people, activities, things. It's like it's just, it's exciting because it's new, and we're built that way. When something comes in, we're built to be aware and heightened awareness to, so we can uh, figure out how to use it, what to do with it. But then we, as human beings, we, we acclimate this stuff. You know, we have to because we have to figure out what to do with this and then make it part of our life so we can be aware for whatever else is coming in, so we can protect ourselves, so we can make best use of the environment, so we can be safe. And so... Um, but then it's very confusing because we've been taught, like, oh, if you get this thing, you're going to be so happy. It's going to change your life forever. <laughs> you're never going to be the same. Yeah. And then that that excitement is short-lived for everybody. I mean, I've bought stuff, mm. and I put it in the car, and I'm driving home, and I feel that excitement just ebb away, you know, just, <laughs> um, it just yeah. it goes, you know. And it's sort of like, okay, you know. Um, so, and I know I know a good stuff sign of when I'm tired and I need to rest or just get away from everything for a little, for briefly is is whenever I feel like, oh, I, sh- I need this thing. You know, it's kind of like this ravenous feeling for mm-hmm. I got to get this. I got to get this person. I got to get, I got to get this, this, um, this particular item, you know, I have to do this particular thing. And, it, and it's, it's like, it's more, it feels more compulsive and out of frustration rather than, oh, wouldn't that be neat? I said this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so nothing's going to, nothing's going to be exciting forever. And, 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 um, it doesn't mean that everything is worthless and we should not have anything, but it's good to recognize the truth about stuff. It comes in, we're excited and then we get used to it. And maybe it becomes a useful part of our life. Maybe the shirt we wear that we're all excited about it, it's still nice to wear it every day. Or maybe a CD that we we listen to. Um, we listen to it maybe every month, but we still like it. So there's, you know, sometimes things they're they're a benefit, but but sometimes we bring things into our lives, and I know this from working with clients. They they have things that still have the tags on them, you know, clothing with the tags on them, or like CDs or DVDs that are still in the wrapper because they they bought it because they thought, oh, I, I I need this, I want this, and then it gets home and it doesn't get used. So when you recognize that, you just go like, "All right, I got, I got tricked. It happens. Oh well, you know, I'll just, well, I'll just give it away. I think I'll tell you testament. to return it." Or, what's that? No, I was just gonna say, I think it's a testament to what we said earlier. You literally are. People are literally hypnotized into the process of thinking whatever it is they're going to buy is going to serve some kind of purpose. And then, yeah. as soon as we as soon as we purchase it, the, the, you know the only the only uh, uh, how do you say desire of the advertisement 
to get us, get us to do the action is to purchase. And once they do that, that, that spell, spell becomes a little bit broken. broken. And once it's broken, we sit there and we look at it and we say, what did I buy? buy? And I, I don't know if you've ever done that. Done that. You get home and you're like, you look at it and you're like, why did I buy that? Why, 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 why did I, what did I, what did I, what was I thinking? And the, and the point, point is, point is, is you weren't you, 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 you were in the way to do a being, coerced, coerced, buying, 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 being programmed, programmed from, from all the, the onslaught of, 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 of uh, attention. Uh, attention. Every, every, every second, second of our life, our life, something started to grab our attention. So, so part of the exercise, guys, you stop, stop, you know, paying attention to things that are constantly, constantly, you know, in front of you. If you can, get off the computer, you can turn off your TV. You know, you know, don't look at the, don't look at the advertisements. I come from an advertising background, so I hope I'm, you know, I don't need to insult my own profession, but it really is manipulative. And it can be quite oh, overwhelming for a lot of people. You, you can insult it. It's okay to insult it. <laughs> it's good to call it for what it is. I mean, it's, I, well, I have it's, no fault with people that is. do that. It's, 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 yeah. their, it's their profession. It's what they, they got to do. You know, it's what they got to do. We don't have to yeah. buy this stuff. And it, and it really helps to know, like, all right, this is what's happening. Um, and, and you may even have desire. You can even check some of the desires you have currently in your, in your heart and your mind. And just look at them and go, like, all right, what are some of the things I think I need? And that doesn't mean, like, right. all right, whatever I need is, like, is definitely something I don't need. But just take a look at it and go, all right, I think I need to um, to own this particular thing. I, I feel like I have to have this particular thing. And, and then ask questions about it. Like, okay, so what's this? What's, what's my, what am I going to get from this? Imagine having it, like, you know, and see what comes up. And, and maybe you'll realize, oh, man, I don't really want that. <laughs> what was I thinking? Or maybe maybe it is worth having. Or maybe it's worth having and then seeing if you really like it, and then maybe it turns out you don't. I mean, everything that comes in, you can look at it like, all right, I'm bringing this into my life. Again, whether it's a person, a thing, an activity, as it comes into your life, go, right, I'm going to see if I like this or not. I'm going right. to try it out and see if I like it. And, and um and it's a healthy thing to do because if you like it, great. Like, oh, I'm very lucky it just came into my life because this is really, my life is a lot better since this has been here. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you bring it into your life and then it it just never feels right. And, 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 you, and you feel like, oh, I wish it did feel right. Or it worked for these other people. They all said it was good. Um, <laughs> but it's But it's not for me. And then you can let it go. So there's no perfect way of doing it, but it's really good to be open and aware and, and, and to see. And, and to not feel badly if you get tricked. We all get tricked into buying stuff we don't need. I've gotten right. tricked. I've seen a lot of people that have been tricked. Um, and it doesn't matter. You could, Again, it's not necessarily just stuff. It could be um, things. Maybe you're doing something spiritually that other people are like, oh, you got to do this meditation or whatever. Like, oh, okay, great. You know, and you try it, and it doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't suit you. It suited them. Right. But not you. So you can go, all right, I'm not going to keep doing this because obviously it's not serving me. It's the ability to be right. able to look at something and go, not for me. For you, maybe, so, fine, but not for me. Right. So to develop some discernment about what it is that you have and and you know, whether or not it's serving you, whether or not you want to even bring it in in the first place. And once you do bring it in, once you have it, to not be attached to it and be willing to let it go. Well, you might get attached. Yeah, you might get attached. You might hang on to it longer than you wish you had. It's, it's you know, it's not a perfect world. So we try stuff and and maybe we get fixed for a little while, you know, and and maybe we don't. Mm -hmm. And, um, this this is really all about just more of an awareness about our stuff, about our space, about the things we have, and and being okay if, if things haven't worked out into, enough to let them go. Like, all right, this isn't for me. And and mm-hmm. and sometimes we don't want to let something go because we fear like what's going to take its place. Like this isn't right. the best thing in the world. I don't really like it. It kind of hurts me in certain ways, but I'm scared to let it go. I don't know what's gonna what what's gonna come. But but um, whatever is not. I mean, removing pain is the main thing. 
it's not fitting you, fine. Let's let it go. And um, and if something comes in, see if it feels good or not. And and maybe nothing comes in for a while. You know, of that particular area that that um, that that you let go of. So sometimes, I guess too, like you said, nothing coming in. I know that. Um, uh, my dad used to say to my mom, and we had a very clean house, so it's nothing but clean, clean, clean house or anything. But he would say to her, "You just can't leave any corner empty." She always had to have something there, and she she admitted it. She said, "I don't know why I do that," but she always wanted something in every bit of available space. You know, not yeah. to the degree where it was cluttered, but as there is something about that as well of needing something, feeling like if there's a space you need to fill it, but maybe it's also about understanding that sometimes it's okay if some things are open. Well, when I, when I work with people and they let go of stuff, I ask them to notice the space as they're letting things mm-hmm. go. Um, because we're right. not used to space. We're, actually, we are uncomfortable with it often because it's, we're used to being distracted. You can get addicted to being distracted. and You can get addicted to something that doesn't serve you, you know. Um, and it feels yeah. uncomfortable when you go against the addiction. But it, that's why when I work with people, I'm very gentle about it, and they go, so this area that you just cleared out, how does it feel? And sometimes at first they're like, well, it looks good, you know, or I guess, I don't know. And I go, yeah, yeah, just take it in, though, on a feeling level. Because it's hard at first to notice space. Because space in itself is a thing, you know, just as much as the stuff in the space. So noticing the space and feeling it, because space has a restorative quality. It has a soothing feeling. Like, you know how it is, like, if you go outside to a park or something, it feels relaxing. It feels spacious, Mm -hmm. and you can feel the tension melt away. And and so um, you can have that where you live as you remove stuff, noticing that, you know, and... And so I tell people to not, to fight the impulse, to let go of the impulse to get something, put something in the place right away, you know, to go out to the store and buy something, put something in there. I'll say just become friendly with the space for a little bit and see how it feels. And actually after a little bit of time, you can get used to it. But it helps to talk about it like that, just as space as a thing, as a tangible thing. And, and, mm-hmm. and it makes you appreciate the space more. And then the space appreciates you. It's a very reciprocal thing. I do agree. I think that your your home has its own energy. I I always say I love my home, and my home loves me. Yeah. Because we have a we have a relationship with with each other. Um, yeah. The house and I. Yeah. 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 Right. So you're tending yeah. to that relationship when you clutter bus. And you increase well, your, say, your connection to the space. I will say this. The one thing I love about this house where I am now is that I have physically touched every part of this house um, mm-hmm. because I moved in and it had to be completely renovated. But I painted so much of it. I was part of the construction of it. I've hung the mm-hmm. lights in it. I've scrubbed the floor. You know what I mean? I have such an intimate relationship with wow. this building that yeah. I really I really do have that connection to it and and I do feel that when it gets cluttered and messy it's you know the energy gets a little bit less happy I don't want to say it, it's angry or anything like that but it just feels stagnated and it's such a relief but this house definitely nurtures me in so many ways um and and yeah, I know I that, like that when it's that. clean and happy yeah the connection I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's a tangible thing. We have everything right. in our life we have a relationship with. So when we take care of our space, we reconnect with our space. And my experience, you know, working, doing clutter busting and just being a person, it seems like connection is the is pro- probably the best feeling we can have. And it's the most satisfying feeling as a human being to have a feeling of connection. And it could be with another person. It could be with yourself, it can be with the space you're living in, and and that feeling 
is satisfying. And, and that's what advertising tries to reproduce, that feeling, you know, like you will feel part of something. But it, the, the way right. you feel part of something is by asking yourself how you feel <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and removing things that hurt you, you know, because you, you're removing the distraction. And when the distraction is gone, you reconnect with yourself. I talk a lot about that in my second book. But it's that connection that is what we're after. And it's possible to have that just by going, do I like this or can I let it go? Because you reconnect with yourself and then you remove things that hurt you. And and mm. that's a worthy endeavor. That's like a slot machine that always pays off. You know what I mean? It's like there's a slot machine that you could put a quarter in and every time you pulled it, money came out. That's what right. going through the clutter bus is like because you get relief and you get connected with each thing. And and um and I see it in people's faces. They they come back to life because because of the reconnection and because they remove the things that drain them, you know. And and we're surrounded. Well, it, we're, there are things in their environment that that are that are clutter that, that can go. How does that translate to? Um, this is a bigger question, but it just made me think. Mm-hmm. How does that translate to society? I mean, I know it's individual. It's in your own house. It's in your own home. It can be in your car. It can be wherever. But how does that translate into society? Have you taken it that much further? How does uh, what translate to society? Well, I mean, there's a lot of clutter. Say places that are, uh, you know, abandoned uh, places or messy. You know, look at neighborhoods, how they mm. – how they you know the energy of the neighborhood can change just by turning a uh a abandoned or a very you know a, a trash heap into a park i mean have you have yeah. you thought about applying your your philosophy to that into sort of more neighborhoods as opposed to just individuals uh that sounds really good I'd love to do that you should do <laughs> yeah. that I think you could do that <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> I, I'm actually working with a client right now who who um who works with parks in cities that are just dilapidated parks and he right. cleans them up with his company, he cleans them up and, and improves them and, and changes the neighborhood around, you know. And uh, I mean I feel like when somebody clutter butts in their in their living in their home in their living space, they're affecting the whole environment. You know, they're affecting their neighbors because they're feeling better and that, that right. feeling's gonna spread to other people, you know. And right. um, I mean, who knows? Maybe this could expand to neighborhoods and things like that. I'm, I'm open to the idea of it. You know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, also, companies, but, companies as well. Yeah, I've worked with companies. That, actually, I love working with companies because companies, like people's office, is like their it's they're like their second home. You know, because mm-hmm. they spend actually more time sometimes in the office than they do in their house, and so. Um, it's great to go through people's workspaces and offices because um, they have just as much clutter in their offices as they do in their homes, you know. And so um, the company changes the company around for people to, for, for the company to get rid of old, outdated equipment, electronics, um, you know, um, old papers, electronic stuff, um, things on computers they don't need anymore, just removing that stuff allows that productivity to become a lot stronger in the company and for the people to be happier in their jobs because they're able, again, to communicate um, more smoothly with each other. So that's, again, a satisfying yeah. feeling. We need to send you to government. <laughs> <Yeah. crazy. laughs> I don't know yeah, where I'll, you would start, you know, but as soon as you got in the front door, you just start with the first room. I don't know, but... Yeah, yeah. I think I could go into um I mean I feel confident from doing this for fifteen years. So I could go into um a, a new situation like that. Yeah. I think it would be an interesting challenge just to see. You know, I know that you know, I think about like old restaurants. There's a very particular person I'm thinking of right now. There's a there's a club over here, um, that is a music club and if you go mm-hmm. into the upstairs of that building he has an amazing upstairs like it's incredible he could have 
a second bar up there. He could rent out a place where someone could live there or whatever. But it is li- literally full, full, full of uh, floor to rafter of so much crap like you've never seen. Old party things, old this, old that, music equipment, wires, lamps, anything. And it's just never, he doesn't throw it away. He just sticks it up there. Yeah, yeah, I've, and um, I've seen that. I've seen that. I remember I was hired by this advertising agency in Chicago, and they they had me come in to their media room, and there was like a fifty or so years worth of um, like videotapes and film stock and 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 recordings of commercials that, that they'd been saving over the years, and they wanted me to come in and organize it, you know. <laughs> and I love like organizing because I organizing. Is the idea of it is just like moving stuff around so it looks orderly, you know. And I, I said, yeah. well, let's go through stuff so we can find things that you guys don't actually need anymore. And that'll, that'll, you know, by getting rid of the clutter, then it's organized because you're you're not, you know, lost amongst stuff that you don't need anymore. So in just a few hours' time, this room that was packed, just packed with so much stuff. We got rid of at least like eighty percent of the things in there, just by my asking them, "Do you guys actually need this film stock, or are you going to use it for anything, or can we let it go?" A very matter of fact, you know, but but in a helpful way, like, "Are you actually using this, or not?" You know, and um, and upon questioning, they were like, "No, yeah, we don't need this. Why do we even have this?" And just one thing after another, <laughs> they just filled up bins. You know, it was so exciting; they couldn't believe that. Um, that so much stuff could go, and that's that's pretty much how it is when I work with a business or a person. It's just like they they can't believe how much stuff goes. They thought like, oh, you know, maybe I'll get rid of a few things or whatever. But uh, again, upon looking and and asking, they realize I don't need this. I don't need this, and they're stunned. Wow. But, but they're stunned <laughs> and they're excited because it's like there's a part of me that goes, thank God I don't have to deal with this stuff anymore. Because to try to maintain clutter is exhausting. It's like you're trying to maintain it something is. that doesn't give you anything back. So, you, oh, yeah, I can use it. People put stuff in storage lockers, and they spend lots and lots of money every year, like monthly payments to, to, put, to put stuff in a room that they're not even, you're not even using this stuff. It's like alimony for clutter. You know, it's like they can't live with it, so they have to give it a house. <laughs> the, the house that oh. is temperature controlled, you know. And, um, and, it, and and sometimes people go, yeah, I haven't looked at my storage locker for three years. So there's the stuff that they don't need, but they're giving it a house, and nobody's using it. It's like, and, and money's going down the drain, you know. So that's how powerful clutter is. It's like, oh, we need to protect this stuff but that isn't actually helping me, you know. You know, the second part you don't realize until you look. But initially, you think, I need to keep this stuff. I need to maintain that. I need to hang on to it. Again, because we think we need things to be happy, and we and we measure our worth by what we have. And we've been trained to do that. It's nobody's fault. It's, it's whatever it happens to, like, most of us. It's, it's nothing wrong with us for doing that. Again, we, we've been taught how to do it. But it's not making us happy. And, and so anybody that's right. listening today, there's a part of you that feels like I'm not happy, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be spending my Sunday listening to um, a talk about clutter. There's something wrong, and I want to figure out what it is. And that's the impulse that can make you take a look. Once you take a look, it's like, wow, you know. I just, I love the phrase you said, alimony for clutter. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, when it's happening to you, you don't realize it. But as an outsider, you see somebody like paying all this money to, with stuff that, if you if you loved and used it, it would be with you. You know, locked room that's with a security guard protecting it from what you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it, protecting it from all the, so that someone else doesn't put all there stuff that they want to, in your locker, you know, you only, you only have money to protect yourself for your, from yourself, I guess. You just don't want somebody else's stuff somehow finding its way in. Cause that's what it feels like when you actually open the door to something and you yeah. haven't seen it for a while. You're like, where did I even get this? Do I, where did this come from? 
Did I buy yeah, this? Is this mine? That's what happens. People are like, what was I thinking? Well, <laughs> what? I can't believe that I was protecting this stuff. When you when they actually look Not at it. Not only that, but you don't remember it at all. There are some things that I have that I couldn't tell you how I got them if my life depended on it. Yeah. Then those are the things that, that you look at them and you go, all right, I'm going to let it go. I mean, the things yeah. that we actually like and use that are a real part of our lives, like this matters, like this radio show. You love your radio show, right? Yes. Right. There's no hesitation. It's like, yes. So the, the radio <laughs> show is not clutter. It's a part of your life. And there was that certainty of yes. That's how you know when something yes. fits your life. But if I said, do you like the radio show? You're like, well, you know, um, I used to. I mean, it was really a lot of fun, but whatever. You know, what? I mean, whatever words you put after, you know, the, the question. But yeah, beyond yes, makes makes it a suspect, you know. And and so. Oh, so if you hesitate at all, so if you say to me, "Do you like?" Because I, I was just thinking of all these shoes. You started saying shoes. I started laughing earlier. I, I when I moved here from Florida, this is the truth, and this is 15 years ago. And now I'm, I have, a, I'm one of those women with a lot of shoes, and I have a very big closet. So I had the room to put them all. But when I first came from Florida. I had only open toe shoes and because it was hot and you don't wear boots and things. And then when I got to Europe, it's cold. So you, all those shoes that I've had that I spent very good money on and that I loved them (laughs) at the time, (laughs) I thought I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, throw them away or get rid of them because they're good quality and so I'll keep them. So I've kept them very neatly within my closet. And, mm-hmm. you know, the thing is I'm going to move back to Florida. So when I was packing, I was looking at all these shoes thinking, wow, I haven't seen these shoes in so long. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'll wear this again because now I'll have the chance to wear them. So I don't know. Uh-huh. I have mixed feelings about so when are you mo- whether or when are you not I should get rid Florida? of them in a month. When are you moving back? Oh, you're going to be month. back there in a month. Okay, yeah. so you're going through your stuff this between now and the yes. end of April. Well, I packed them all. I just packed everything because I thought, well, right, right. So, when I get there, <laughs> I'll deal with it. Right, right. That was, well, I would, yeah. again, I, again, Karen, I would encourage you to go through some of this if you've already packed, you know? Because it's not, it's it's in your place, right? It's in your home. The stuff you've packed. Is that right? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, it is. I have my mic muted. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, so the stuff you have is is in your house. So you can open up some of the boxes. You can just sweep with a curious eye and take a look. Like <laughs> you know, what? I think I'm going to try on some of those shoes. As if you're in a store today and you're trying them on, and you go like, "All right, I I did spend good money on them." in the past, um, yeah. but I'm trying them on today. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually have my hands clenched right now. <laughs> I know, because this is powerful. <laughs> Karen, I think the only reason I'm on your show is to help you prepare for your move, you know, because obviously I yeah. think there's some stuff going on, but you don't want to bring that stuff with you if it's if it's not serving you, because because it's like it's like if you had cockroaches in your house and you moved to another house, and they get into the boxes that you're um, packing, and then they move to your new house, and they just spread because clutter spreads. It's like a like a weed, you know. <laughs> it really has an energy about it that makes things other clutter stick to it. And, oh, and um, so, so that's why I encourage you not to pay money to move something that you're just going to throw out when you get there. You know, if you go through yeah. it, it's, again, it's a lot harder to go through stuff once you unpack because you want to feel like. I want to ground myself in this place. I want to be here. And it feels weird to let go of something when you're trying to ground yourself. No. Right. So, well, so listen, you can open a box. I'm good. I'll do it. I promise. I'll, I'll look at the box. <laughs> okay, because we're, we're all hearing you say that, Karen. All the, all the people <laughs> listening right now are, are taking you for your words. And uh, I'm not they trust you, so. Them away, but I will look at them. I will. I will look at them and say, "Do I need these? Do I not?" And and I will say, I did go through some of my stuff and say, "No, I don't want that," and got rid of it. But not okay. not as much as probably I should. But we yeah, do have yeah, a call. Yeah, yeah, you're all we'll back. This now. 
<laughs> Give me a call one moment. I'll get you. Okay. I think I think this I think this is a Skype call. Let me see if I can pick it up. Hi. Right, I think you're on Skype call. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh. Hello. It, your call's a little bit uh, muffly, but but we can hear you. Who is this? I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry that the microphone and the screen were working very well. Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, yeah, hi, yeah, hi. Okay, so I just want to say I really like what was said about the, um, you know, people being so focused on materialism. And there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But uh, the challenge is, you know, I think that as a society or as different societies around the world, people become so focused on that keeping up with the Joneses and we forget to actually enjoy life uh, because we're constantly trying to gain the affirmation of others. We never get it uh, because, you know, there should be an economy of uh, caring for one another rather than, you know, that would bring real true joy and happiness. But there's no balance. There were very little balance. Uh, because everyone's sort of marketed to in that way. And then obviously there is a lot of clutter. And I, I find that also on interacting with people on a daily basis, um, like even if you talk about something like uh, human interactions, something like dating, immediately people size you up based on what you've got in the bank account or how much you can, how much materialistic stuff you can buy for that status. And that's a seriously, I mean, I'm not saying people need to go to the other end of the spectrum and become communists or something like that where everyone's equal because that doesn't work either. But but this idea of um, human character being of more value, perhaps, or at least at least equal value, uh, which isn't perhaps right. I think character is more important, but at least on par with uh, a person's bank account or what they can or cannot afford and how much stuff they have. Sure. Well, that, that, that exists, you know. But, uh, but I think other things exist, too. I, I think the stuff that we're talking about today and the fact that you're bringing this up means that that um, that other ideas can come in to, to replace that or change things around. I mean, there's probably always going to be some part of society that is controlling or, or wants to dictate how people should be or feel, you know, because um, that's some people's natures are that way. Um, but but I think it's great that... that um, you're able to see things this way and, and, and it probably affects your life in a, in a positive way to be able to see clearly, you know, amidst the chaos. Cause there's a lot, cause it can be hard to, to think clearly for yourself amidst all that stuff you were talking about. Um, and, and I think it's good to be able to, to notice what's happening and, and to take care of yourself appropriately, you know, and th- that's why asking questions yeah. about the things in your life helps you get, get that thing back that you're talking about, that connection, with other people that, you know, the compassion for other people, because of, literally that's one of the best feelings there is compassion and connection. And, um, you know, and it does exist in places, you know, and, and in some places it's, it's harder to find. Um, but I think talking about it like this, that we're, like we're doing on the show, um, helps illuminate this concept. So maybe it, it starts to become more of people's lives, you know? Well, I'll I think it's really that, you know, fractional... for me too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I I just want to add something. It's a confirmation for me that you calling in with this particular point, because as I said earlier in the show, and I don't know if you heard it, but yesterday was the summer sol, or excuse me, the spring solstice, and I was with a a group of people, and we did a lot of different kind of meditations, and one of the very we did meditations for change, and one of the meditations that we did was for the healing of the mentality of the planet and to help people develop sort of discernment and transmute some of these things as opposed to, so and part of that mm-hmm. comes with noticing that we have been uh, and, and Brooks used the term hypnotized in a lot of ways to acquire uh, things. So part of the realization of that, the waking up of that is, you know, the first understanding that that's what's happening, and then after having that knowledge, choosing to do something different. So for me, the fact that that Brooks is on the show today and that you're having that, um, you know, you have that realization, it's just a confirmation that that meditation from yesterday was the right thing to do. 
you know, and, and hopefully awesome. that, you know, you're just, you know, you're one person, but, you know, every, I'm sure that there's many people like you, hopefully, that are also starting to wake up in that way because we have to wake up first and then we have to choose mm-hmm. what we're going to do second. So, you know, good for you that you're awoken in that way to this very subject and this very thing. Thank you. I actually live yeah. in Africa. And, uh, oh, okay. It's very difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult to see the poverty here. And then you compare it with, you know, the fact that the reason all of this is perpetuated is that people are distracted by bells and whistles and trinkets and what we might call bread and circuses, which is what the Roman Empire used to distract people from the politics of the day. Um, unfortunately, yeah, sure. it gets to a point where, yeah, um, unfortunately, it gets to a point where everybody's uh, in the upper echelon of having resources is distracted by their responsibility as human beings to their fellow human beings. And and because of mechanisms like this, what we call fractional reserve banking, which is a fancy word for basically ripping people off, which is the Federal Reserve and um, so many reserve banks around the world, they're basically playing numbers games where only very clever economists and so on can actually see what's going on. And everybody is running around chasing after this, trying to get something extra instead of reinventing the world, reinventing the system in a way that could help communities. And uh, therefore, we're actually we're becoming very evil in our... I, I include myself in this. We, we actually, by omit a mission, by not doing anything, by not recognizing what needs to be done, we become complicit in allowing this poverty to continue. And then you see the suffering. And anyone that's any, ever been through days where they've gone hungry, and I think very few people have, uh, and maybe something like comparatively in something like North America, United States, but uh, going hungry for like, you know, two or three days and really realizing how that feels and having people just not care or just not having anyone to come alongside you and say, well, here's just at least something to eat. Uh, it is, it's something to, to think upon and try and put oneself into that mindset. And whether it be emotional food that somebody needs or whether it be uh, physical food that somebody needs, we need to find ways in societies to build those mechanisms in because there are very powerful forces operating around us which want to keep us in that lower level mindset. It sounds cliche, but that's the truth. And hypnotize us, as you said, into being in living in an illusion. You know? Anyway, yeah, I digress, so but I really appreciate it. You could do a, So I really think that, I mean, that a lot of that exists, of course, but I really think like there's no small. There's no act that's too small to be able to help, you know. Like I was going to say really, that as well. Yeah, there, there really isn't because I, I think I think that it's like because if you see it again, it could be like if you see it all as as what it, as that situation, and it does exist a lot. It's like overwhelming. It's it's daunting, and I think that's why a lot of people don't do stuff because if you look on the news, it's like it's very it's yeah. just too much to see all the the that stuff happening, you know, and, and, and it hurts our hearts, I think, in a lot of ways. And it's hard yeah. to have compassion when you feel like you're overwhelmed. And, but my experience is um, that whatever you can do, you know, like I, I wrote these books and I'm talking about it here. It's like you're talking about it. But, so these are things that, that, that are worthwhile. They're, they add up. And, and maybe you can do something, a little thing like, um, you know, just smiling at somebody, or that, that happens to catch your gaze, or, or just you know, giving a little money to a charity, or or donating stuff that you don't want anymore to a charity, like that. That's a, there's a lot of compassion and and all that, and compassion is powerful, you know. And I think it helps, like, to admit, like, all right, it's very overwhelming the situation, but what what's something that I can do that's small, you know, small thing that I can do. Yeah, it does. It really it helps, you know. And if you try to measure it against everything else, it seems too much. But I really think, I think you have a really good heart, and and you care a lot. And I think that's what you're talking about. And 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 uh, it's exciting that you're talking about it. You know, so congrats. Thank you. Thanks for your words. Thank okay, you I'm, very I, much. I, I'm going to put you I back. On, I'll go. No, uh, I, I was just, it, just saying. I, I unfortunately you, jumped into the show late. Okay, well, you know, it's interesting because 
we're, we're talking about specifically, you know, getting rid of personal clutter. But I think what I was saying earlier, um, and I don't know what point you came in, but I was saying it has a lot of legs. And what I mean by legs is it, it really expands into every part of our life. You know, it goes into the big, the bigger things, you know, like what you're speaking about and just the disregard of people and the manipulation of them. But what Brooks does, and I think it's very interesting, is his method of of um which i'm which is what i'm I'm interpreting you now brooks but your me- his yeah. method of change is to not look at the biggest picture for too long but to look at every little take the baby steps that are necessary because as individuals that's where we're effective the awareness is coming from more and more people this is a conversation that is growing all across the planet. So people are starting to notice. So the next thing is, what do we do? And if, and if anything, we have to get ourselves in, under control first. And that well, will yeah, start to expand. Yeah. So, yeah, taking a look ahead, at your Brooks. own life. You, yeah, taking a look at your mm-hmm. life. And, and again, questioning the, the things in your life, you know, um, the activities that you do, the things that the people in your life, the stuff in your life, and just individually, not as a whole, because if you see it as a whole, you will shut down. I mean, if I go on the New York Times website and I look at all the crazy stuff that's going on, it's like I feel like giving up, you know. So it helps to go to reduce it down to what's in front of me, because that's the only thing we actually have control over, you know, like what's in front of me. And when you do take care of yourself in that way by questioning and then removing things, you you feel better, and that affects the environment. Because otherwise, if we're really stressed and overwhelmed, then we just contribute to the mass feeling of that, you know? So it's like, all right, I, I can take care of people in other countries. I can, I can even take care of my neighbors. So so what can I do in my own space? And and you go through it, and you're yeah. moved up, and you feel relief, and you feel and that affects other people. People get inspired from your feeling better. And maybe you do have a little extra space as a result of that, and maybe you're able to help other people in some ways, you know, and, and contribute to a charity or financially or give some time, you know, or speak about something and and help people get a different insight. And and it's working on a small scale, but it affects, it affects everything because everything you do has that transformative effect. You may not, you may not, Seen that way and feeling overwhelmed, you know. But anyway, taking those steps really be, matter. I'm sorry, the line has got a bit of a delay. Would you guys be okay if I mentioned um, like what I think is the crux or like the main core of the issue that we're dealing with? Well, well only I think, if it's, only I think if it's, that it's not really you know the I mean? subject, only because. I don't think it's really the subject okay. of, of the show, but I invite you to call back um, no next week because we'll, ha- we'll have something that's more along that okay. subject. But I want to stay on a, on a very okay. sort of, we want to stay a little bit light if we can. But, 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 I, but I will okay. say to you, you that so I, I agree with what you're saying, but thank you so much for calling. All right. Okay. Have a good show. Thanks. Bye. Thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See what I was saying? It really does have legs, what you're doing, because it it is so very um, freeing freeing yourself. I think it comes down, like you said, to being free. And ultimately, everybody wants to be free. And, And when you start to talk about it, you start to awaken not only the clutter that is in our own lives, but the clutter that's in society, the clutter and in the, in the clutter in, in the way of being trapped and being unable to move in a lot of different ways. So what you're doing on your little, in the microcosm of what you're doing has such huge impact um, that maybe you hadn't considered and that that last caller, he wanted to go there, but I think we, I think we could go there, but it would really go away from <laughs> the subject, but, it, but it's well, very I valid. Think, I think it, say was, it. it was good. He, yeah, he got to express this stuff and I think that's important. I think it's really good to yeah. um, come back down again to what, what's, what's within your own capacity. And if, if, um, right. if what's within your capacity is what's your stuff, like right in front of you. Then, then that right. that makes again that contributes to your well-being by by looking and removing 
and, and then you, and again, you have more space to be able to help, to help other people, if that's something that you feel calling for, you know, and, um, and, uh, but, but I think, I encourage people to start with themselves and, and taking that look and then seeing what comes from that, you know. Exactly. You know what? We missed our break, but I think we should take it now. Um, I'm okay. going to play the announcements and just give ourselves just a few minutes just to uh, get some water, do our things. And we have about seven minutes and 24 seconds, seven minutes and 21 seconds. Don't hold me mm-hmm. to that number, but we'll just take a quick uh, break and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, great. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness, and here's what's coming up on the week starting on Monday, February the 9th, until Sunday, February the 15th, on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2. Simply put, Rob Gothier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN1, Monday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel Channers, the creators, the Hathors, the Philia the Fairy, the Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions, and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can learn more about Daniel on his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest on Monday is Andy and Jonathan Goldman. They will be discussing the power of sound and the power of your voice. The Goldmans are facilitating World Sound Healing Day on February the 14th, and they'll discuss how you can be a part of it. On Tuesdays at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandelmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their sole purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gothier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. And on the third Wednesday, we'll have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have in their mind. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him at trebchanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob has two special Special announcements. On April 3rd to 5th, 2015, spend three days with Treb and Aradif in beautiful Asheville, North Carolina during the lunar eclipse. This is a three-day workshop on channeling. Only 30 spots are available. And then on September 19th, TrebChanneling.com presents the Channel Panel, Awakening from Within. Channelers include Lee Harris, Sean Swanson, Daniel Scranton, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Brad Johnson, Sean Randall, and Rob Gothier. This incredible live event is available in person and also on live stream. The cost of admission is $120 per day or $200 for both days. And on live stream, $50 per day or 100 for both. Go to TrebChanneling.com to purchase a ticket. Rob's guest on Wednesday night is the Reverend Robert Short of Cornwell, Arizona. He is a spiritual counselor and what some refer to as a UFO contactee and channel. His work began in 1952 when he was led by his extraterrestrial sources to Giant Rock, California and the home of the famed UFO contactee George Ventassel. Since then, Robert and his family have all undergone UFO second, third, and fourth type of encounters. Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group on Facebook and also on YouTube. On Fridays, The Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. Kalina will help you navigate and expand through the exciting confusions that we are manifesting as new 5D beings. 
Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Victoria Vivas Kuong hosts Earth Sky People Radio, living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society, bringing to you greater awareness regarding starseeds and extraterrestrial life, living in harmony with one another and with Mother Earth and with life beyond the Earth, the transformative power of music, frequency, and sound, shamanism, ancestral wisdom, and the star nations, intentional communities, self-sustainable and regenerative living, and the interstellar alliance or planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society, and much, much more. See all the details at victoriavivez.com forward slash radio. On February 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific, the third international chanting for peace and laughter worldwide celebration with Victoria Vivas Kuong and guests Rob Gothier, Dwayne Hartman, Brad Johnson, Joy Miller, Kalina Angel, Goddess Gloria, New Earth Music with Misha Worldwind, New Earth Tether with Gina Catoli, and many more are thrilled to be leading us in a session of sound healing, dance, and laughter. It's a free event for you to have fun while raising our collective frequency and contributing to the peace of the world. Go to victoriavivas.com forward slash peace and the number three. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show About Oneness. About Oneness is a radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and a realization of oneness. The show for me is about integrating all of my experiences and following my highest excitement, which is tapping into the truth of the universe. If you would like to learn more about me, my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos of channeling teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. My show on the 15th of February will be a re-airing of my interview with my mentor and my spiritual mother, Caroline Hart. On EEN Network 2, on Saturday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting the show, Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the the on-the-edge-of-our-seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never can get enough in the investigating of all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these same things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that just cannot be answered by anyone. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are ready to listen to again immediately after they air on Blog Talk Radio on playback. Or you can go to the Enlightenment Evolution Network YouTube page. Namaste and back to the show. Okay, we're back. Paul, uh, Brooks, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Oh, okay, great. Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. I, I wanted to call you. Yeah, <laughs> you I can, can hear you. Asleep. I wanted to call you Palmer. I don't know why. Hmm? Uh, Palmer? Um, yeah, sometimes people I don't know call why. me Palmer. Her first name. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. So where were we? Where? Well, I, I was, this is what I was thinking on the break. I was thinking, could you give us maybe, you know, as we're getting to closer to the last half hour of the show, maybe you can give us mm-hmm. some exercises that we can do, you know, personally, maybe give us five steps to decluttering our lives just to get us on yeah. the road <laughs> to recovery. Sure. Well, um, here, here's some things I would recommend. Um, first, um, pick like pick an area to go through in your home, whether it's a pile of papers on your counter or um, you know a drawer in your kitchen or or some stuff on your desk or um, an area of your closet, um, and and um, and and you could like pick an amount of time, like a half hour or an hour. And you can even set a um, set a timer, you know, if you want. And then have some trash bags by your side, um, a trash bag for um, trash, one for charity, one for um, recycling, if you have it there. And then um, I can drink a water <laughs> before you do it so you feel hydrated and, and take a snack if you need to. <laughs> and uh, because you want to be thinking clearly and blood sugar is good. And then just pick up the first item in that area. 
and just pick it up and and it helps to hold it in your hands and and to look at it and go um do i do I like to use this is this is this a living part of my life like right now or or can I let it go either yes or no mm. you know um and and see what comes up you know just see see what you feel like when I asked you about your radio show and, and I said do, do you want to keep it and you go yes so there's some things that are going to be yes as like instant, you know. But then, it, right. you know, if you find yourself thinking about it, well, you know, um, I just want to put this in a maybe pile and think about it later. That's a big red flag. <laughs> don't don't put anything away. If you're feeling is there, there no maybe about fl- is there no maybe pile for you? Is there no maybe pile? Is it is it only yes or no? No maybe piles because maybe means it, it, it's it's a it's a big suspect. If you have to say maybe about something, <laughs> it means you're you're half and half about it, you know. And and oftentimes right. there's this feeling of like, I don't I don't want to look at this, you know, because like for instance, someone gave this to me as a gift. I don't like it, but it feels wrong to give away a gift. So I'd rather not think about it because it's too much to think. Of. It's overwhelming, you know. Right. And and so, or they like, I don't use this anymore, but I spent like five hundred dollars on it. And I, I feel like because I spent the money, I should hang on to it. But sorry, I, 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 it's, I'll just put it to the side. And and so you want to avoid those things. You want to question anything that's not a big yes. Because, and this is what it's all about, the presence of anything that isn't supporting you, that isn't nurturing you, or, you know, that isn't, isn't making you happy, or at least, like, you know, I need this to, to in order to do the things I need to do during the day. The presence of that stuff is debilitating. It's 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 stagnating, and it's interfering. And I know because right. when people let those things go, they look so much better. They feel better. They they're glad they did it. There's a relief. So so how important is something if it's doing those things to you? I mean, if it's if it's distracting or or um, hurting you in some way, it has no value. And so it's worth noticing the hesitations. The guilt about stuff, you know, the um, obligation, or I should do this. Like, should is always a pretty good indicator that it's not part of your life. It usually means somebody else thinks I should do this, or, you know, it's you're just supposed to do it, you don't even question it. So, um, by removing those things, you really get your life back. It's just not a concept. It's, it's not this concept, like, oh, this would be a great idea if you did it. When you actually do it, it feels good, and your life, your your life rewards you by by um, making you feel better and, and bringing in the space for opportunities to come in. You know, creating that space for new things to come in that are supportive and that do fit your life. So it's good to be very suspicious, you know, and have that um, <laughs> and use that discriminating part of yourself, your clutter radar. That you're, that's built into you to know when something doesn't feel right. And it is a feeling. It's a sense like eh, something just doesn't feel right. Because you're never going to throw out or let go of anything that does serve you. Like if I told you, you know, I don't think this radio show serves you, you, you wouldn't go, oh, yeah, okay, right, I'll just get rid of it. You'd love it. Right. It matters to you. So it's right. like you're not, right. you can tell yourself that as you go into things. I'm not going to throw out anything that really matters to me. I'm, I, I might be afraid that I will, you know, or I might worry that I will, but you're not, I've never seen anybody like throw out something that, like, oh yeah, I love this. I'm going to let it go, you know. But they do let go I of understand things that, that. feel certain. Yeah. So those are some, that's a well, good way like, to see and then see what happens, you know. I like the, I, again, I like the fact that you say should is very sub, sus, uh, suspect because I think of the stuff. And I think, well, should I do this? Should I not? And what is the what is the attachment there? And if it's something is a should, like you said, it's probably something someone else is telling you or somebody else's expectation is for you. Yeah, and other people's – what other people want for us is powerful. You can't underestimate how, how powerful it is. Another person's intention or – you know, that's close to us, that has some, that has, that we're connected with in some way, their voice is, is powerful to us. And and, mm-hmm. um, and sometimes we worry about upsetting people or being seen as wrong. 
And but the thing is, it's really hard to do stuff based on other people's needs versus our own. It's just really just it wipes us out to live that way. And I think a lot of us do because it's a powerful influence. So sometimes when you look at it, something you might have to really look at that uncomfortable feeling and go, all right, this feels uncomfortable. This doesn't feel good. Do I want this feeling in my life? Like I, like before when I said if I gave you a plate of food and you took a bite and it's like, does this taste good? Do I want to eat this or not? Like, you know, some people could go, oh, I should just eat it because somebody cooked it and they spent a lot of time and I worried that they're not going to like it. So it tastes horrible, but I'm going to eat it anyway. That's kind of what it's like keeping something that that you don't enjoy, you know. And, mm. and, and so it's learning to go, I, I want to take care of myself. I want to treat myself well. And this is an opportunity to do that. So I'm going to remove stuff that's that's hurting me in whatever way that is, you know. Well, that's really deep and profound. It is. So, so let's let's talk about your house. Well, did you have more? Because you were, we were. Did you have more points? Because I had said give us five, but I, I wasn't really keeping count. But you gave us a lot to look at. Oh, I think I, <laughs> I threw a bunch of things into one particular area, and I think it's pretty good. I think People so have too. They can ask more, and, and yeah. or they go to my website. There's a lot of blog posts on there where I talk about different subjects, so, or the books, you know, or a session. So, talk to me about your life. I mean, are you are you clutter free? Um, well, I'm I'm certain there's some clutter somewhere, you know, <laughs> and um, <laughs> but that's because things are constantly things become clutter, you know, and and sometimes you right. don't know until you take a look. I mean, there's like for instance, I have um, like recently uh, my clothes closet. I I was I um, asked my wife to help me go through my clothes closet because she knows she knows about clutter busting, you know, from my talking about it with her. So um, because I knew it would be helpful to have her her asking me questions and have that helpful discernment, you know. So um, she would hold up a shirt and she would go, um, "Do you want to? Do you want this?" keep the shirt, do you wear it or can we let it go? And if I ever paused or go, um then she like sorry clutter. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Again be- because she's hardcore because, then. Yeah, she knows how it goes. It's like you know, you're again if you like something like you didn't have to think about your radio show. Do I like it or not? You know? Hmm, do I Right. Um it's just it fits me, you know. And then there were other pieces of clothes. I'm like, yep, I like that. Yeah, I wear that. They're like, um, you know, because <laughs> there's a point where there's an item of clothing and it, it's just, it may fit me physically, but it doesn't fit me emotionally anymore. You know? Or maybe it just feels right. tired in some kind of way. And, and um, But I didn't know it until I took a look. I assumed because the last time I wore it, I enjoyed it. Um, but the next time I look and it may have lost its place in my life, you know. And that's how things are when you're, they, they do, they just, we change, we're constantly changing. Our bodies change, our conditioning changes. You know, we get older, we have different needs. And so um, that means some of the things that we're used to, like, we don't like anymore because we're, we're different. Right. And, and it helps to notice and remove those things because then you feel better. And you think clearer, and so it's a constant process. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not to say that something that's you know that you've had forever that's an antique in your home that you may or may not use, but you still are completely in love with. That you're supposed to just say, "Oh, it's clutter," and get rid of it. It's something that's stagnating you, or in your way, or taking up unnecessary space. Yeah, yeah, and again, you won't know till you ask. I remember this one client. She, um, we were working in her bedroom, and she had this like little sitting stool at the end of her bed that you would sit on to change your clothes, and it was covered with stuff. Mm-hmm. Which I usually assume if something's covered with things, it's a suspect, you know, because sometimes we cover <laughs> something up because we don't want to deal with yeah. it, you know. It's just like I'd rather not deal right. with this for whatever reason. So I said, well, what about this chair? You know, and she goes. She looked panicked when I talked about it. <laughs> there was this uncomfortable <laughs> tension in her, you know, which means 
that's the effect it was having on her, you know. And um, she goes, well, I, I, I can't even consider this. This is um, this belonged to my mother who passed away, you know. And um, and 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 I inherited it, so I can't I can't get rid of it, you know. She didn't say anything about liking it. It was more mm-hmm. out of like. If it was wrong to get rid of it, but you could tell by her expression that she wasn't enjoying it. She goes, "Well, yeah, I don't really use it. I, I just, um, but if I got rid of it, she, and these are her words. I still remember them because they were profound. She goes, "If I let go of this, I'll be the evil destroyer of my family's history." And those words came out of her <laughs> mouth. You know, I mean, and it was I don't fault her for it. She really felt it. You know, it was like she felt right. an obligation to hang on to this thing that she hated. And that she would be evil to think of taking care of herself first before people who are no longer alive. No. And mm-hmm. and she's not the only one. <laughs> There's been other people that have had that same experience. So, so what was the I, conclusion? I said, what did you say to her? Did... I said, I said, um, this is your life. You know, you don't have to be the the caretaker for the family. And and um, it's not your job to do that. Your job is to to take care of yourself in your own home. Like you can't control the world, but your home is a place where there's some boundaries where you can make decisions, take care of yourself. And um, so so what do you need to to take care of yourself? You know. And she goes, well, I don't want this chair any this changing chair anymore. You go great. And she goes, well, well, what should I do with it? It's got to. I should sell it or I should make sure it goes to a certain place and. And um, and it's not. It wasn't her nature to sell stuff. You know, she wasn't going to do it. So I said, well, let's like with the couch before. I said, let's put it, let's put it out on the street. Someone will come get it. She goes, really? Somebody will get it? I said, yes, yeah, somebody will get it because they want it. They'll see it and they, they'll want it, and they'll take it. So we put it out on the curb, and pretty soon someone came by in a truck and got it. You know, and it was gone. And she wow. was happy. She wasn't like. Wow, that was a big mistake. She just felt this relief. Again, because she was taking care of herself rather than this this idea of what she had to do, which didn't serve her, you know. It wasn't serving her. Isn't it something that there's always someone in a truck to take away your stuff? <laughs> it's very common. It's very common that people do that. I mean, I'm well, you know what? It's in every case, but... but um, the thing is, you can drop it off at a charity, or there's um, God, what's I think Free Cycle. You can FreeCycle dot org. You can list to people in your neighborhood, and you can say, I have this couch or this changing chair or this refrigerator I'm not using it anymore. Um, if you want it, come and get it. And then people email you, and they go, I want it. Yeah. And then they come and get it, and and it's gone. Right. Somebody's using it, which is wonderful because things want to be used. Things are built for action. You know, right. And so it's just if they're sitting. I mean, I can say it to this crowd, the people that are listening, think, things have awareness. You know, so yeah, so things that are built for action. It'd be like a, having a horse and, and putting it in this little room that it can't move in. You know, it just sits there. That's what that's what it's like to have stuff and not be using it to be experiencing it. So when something gets to be experienced, there's there's joy there. You know, and that's why. It, there's an uncomfortable feeling when things aren't being used I mean, because because they're that, built for really, action. Yeah, they're built for action if they're not being used. There's, it's like the um, the story of the littlest Christmas tree. Do you remember that story? No, I've never heard that. You've never heard the story of the littlest Christmas tree? <laughs> no, how does it go? <laughs> well, it... I can't recite it for you, but basically it's about this tiny little tree and he wanted mm-hmm. to be uh he wanted to be chosen to be the Christmas tree. Yeah. You know, for for a little boy and or for a family and he was the smallest one and everybody was picking the bigger ones and it was just how the tree was just so wanting to be to be chosen to be, you know, yeah. to fulfill its destiny as a Christmas tree, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so, so there I mean, you go. <laughs> think, there you yeah. go. I mean, I really do yeah. think that, that people like to be, like like us, like as people, we like to feel important. Like we like to feel like we're doing something that matters to us, that we enjoy, 
that that we you know we feel better when we're moving and, and um and so we can treat our stuff the same way because because if we don't it'll backfire on us we'll feel uncomfortable around our stuff mm. and it's, again it's we're amazing looking to feel to me. good so. Right. It's amazing to me how much stuff people really have. We have something over here uh, called what well, used to be called Queen's Day, which is a celebration mm-hmm. of the Queen's birthday, but now we have a king. So now we have King's Day, and it's a, it's the a 27th of April. And on yeah. the 26th of April, people start marking out their spot on the shopping street where they bring all their stuff that they want to sell that they mm-hmm. haven't been using. And it, when I first moved here 15 years ago, it used to be small, and there was only like one street, and a few people would come out and do their stuff. Now it is such a thing. It's not just one street. It goes down, down, down the street, down the side streets, everywhere. People with more crap than you can ever imagine just yeah, bring yeah. it you there. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how much stuff people have. <laughs> And and the thing is, is that you see all the visitors, and they're walking around, and their arms are full of the stuff that they bought from the other people. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's amazing. <laughs> and I always say, oh. <laughs> yeah, and you, and it's like, uh, where does it all come from? And I always sometimes I'll walk in my house and go, I know I didn't buy any of this stuff. <laughs> where did it all come from? Where is it, you know, where did I get it? Yeah. Well, yeah, we acquire so, a lot of stuff. I remember this one client, she she had this, uh, in her kitchen, she had one of those cabinets where it kind of like went deep into the back of the cabinet area and it circled around. And so um, I had her pull all this stuff out from the, the, the cooking utensils from because she didn't really have any idea what, was back there. So we spread it all out on her living room floor and it covered every part of the living room. And she could, she, could, she just couldn't believe it. She was stunned that she had that much stuff. But, you know, when it's hidden away, we don't see it. I mean, the thing is that we feel it. It definitely affects us. We don't even realize it's affecting us. But we don't consciously know, like, oh, yeah, I have 32 pans, you know, or 32 pots or whatever, <laughs> until you actually right. see it. Same with books, with clothes. It's all in the closet, and you take it all out. A good way to go through your clothes is to take them out of the closet and put them on the bed or the sofa or something because then you can right. actually see what you have, and it's out of its old environment, so it makes it easier to go right. through. And and then you just, you know, you're just, everybody's stunned at the stuff they have. And that helps. You know, you realize, like, I think I have more than I actually need. And... um and then you let stuff go, and you feel good. Hmm. How much of the stuff do people really end up selling? Most people give stuff away, don't they? It's really difficult to sell your stuff. I encourage people to give away rather than to sell, unless they really love to sell. Like, I've met some people, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll put it on eBay, and they do. They put it away, put it on there right away, and they, they get excited to see people who want to buy it, and then they sell it and they ship it out. And those are right. that's their nature. But I think most people's nature is to not do that. Because sometimes people right. go, Yeah, I've been wanting I've been wanting to sell this for two years. I just haven't gotten around to it. So it's it's so much easier and it's instantaneous good feeling of just bringing it to a charity or have a charity pick it up or you know or if you can put it out on the alley for someone to pick up or whatever, just getting it out of your house. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how much you spend on it or how valuable it is. If, if it's just sitting there, no. I'm picturing and, and tomorrow all over. What's up? I'm picturing tomorrow all over America and all over the world. Just stuff is just going to be on the on the sidewalk. <laughs> these magical trucks are going to drive by and pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's people that do that. They they sell that stuff. You know, oftentimes they'll sell it. And so that's great. They, they they made some money, you know, and, and it's going to some place that's, that it can be used. And it's no longer bothering you, you know. It's no longer right. invading your house like a squatter, you know, like something that's just <laughs> a, a bad roommate. That's what this stuff is. It's a bad roommate. Oh. It's, it's not contributing to your welfare. And that's what stuff it has to do to be part of your life. It has to contribute right. to your life. Otherwise, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't have a place in your life. 
uh, has to be. At you that really level have to coin your helping. phrases. You really have to coin your phrases because you're so funny. Yeah. The way you say yeah, it. Yeah. What did you say earlier? Alimony, clutter. Alimony, alimony for clutter. pay you and alimony for clutter. Yeah. You put stuff in storage. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was. I'm a. I'm a musician, and I used to have a band, and and one of the. Um, people in my band was played a double bass, which is a huge, you know, the huge double bass, the one that's like boom, 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 that kind. And he was always upset after the gig because you could never sort of, he never would leave the bass sort of, you know, on the stage. And after we break down, he said he always described his double bass as sort of a, a bad, a badly drunk girlfriend. You can't just set it against a wall because it might just fall over. But at the same time, yeah. you're stuck holding onto it, and it's big and cumbersome because you can't really move around with it. But that's a little bit like, it's a little bit like clutter, you know? Yeah. Just a, yeah, just yeah. a big drunk girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. If you find the big so, drunk things that are um, that are hurt, <laughs> that are uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> So we're, we've got about five minutes left. So why don't you just take a few minutes and tell people how they can get in touch with you, some of the mm-hmm. stuff you have coming up. Um, your, tell them about your books and also, you know, how they can get a session with you because I think that a lot of people need to declutter. Yeah, sure, of course. Well, um, clutterbusting.com, again with an I-N-G at the end, clutterbusting, and uh, that's my website, and it talks about, um, you can find out about my books there. You can order the books. Um, you can find out about setting up a Skype session with me. I work by Skype, and, and um, it works amazingly well. And I work with people all over the world, and and um, and I help them go through their stuff, and they get rid of a lot of stuff. Now it's, um, I'm very encouraging. I keep it kind, and I keep it thorough. Like, you know, um, thing, we find the things and we let them go. You know, <laughs> that aren't serving you. <laughs> And um, I also have an audio book of my first book, which you can uh, download. It's about uh, six hours long to listen to. It's It's got everything in it, and, and I read it myself. That's pretty good. And um, I've got some workshops. I've got a workshop in Seattle, Washington, coming up um, in April that you can find out about. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm looking to set up some workshops in New York City and London when I go to those cities later this year. Um, oh, great. So you can anyway. be over over in uh, Europe. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a lot of clients in in, um, in Europe on Skype. So um, anyway, or you can feel free to ask me. A, you can write me a question. There's a, um, a place on the website where you can um, ask a question and, and uh, get an answer. So um, anyway, mostly I'm, I'm here to encourage encourage you to take a look and to see what's there and and to take a chance to be you know you choose that courageous part of yourself the part of you that really that loves yourself that wants to that, that wants you to feel better you know to to follow that and remove these things as you as you discover them you know remember it's like if you see it all at once it's too much and you don't want to do it so take a kind look you know and and see see which of these things don't have a place in your life anymore, and and let them move on. And and the rewards well, I, I, are huge. No. Well, that is the that is the one message I've taken from your not a, a one of many, but that's the most important one. I like it so much when you say, just don't look at, don't get overwhelmed by the vastness of everything, but just take the time to look at one thing at a time, and and handle that. Yeah, and you and you might feel overwhelmed. I mean, that could easily come up um but that's mm-hmm. normal you can feel okay like yeah that makes sense just like you said i kind of feel overwhelmed looking at it all so i'm just going to look at it a little you know and um mm-hmm. or i forgot to mention also there there's a mailing list i put out a newsletter once a month and if you join it you can get a, a like a free 10 minute recording of me talking about clutter so um so there's a bunch of opportunities there to help you to let go and uh so uh, take a look and see if anything um, feels good for you. you know? Perfect. Well, Brooks, I, I want to thank you so 
so very much for the um, being on the show. If you enjoyed our conversation, Brooks is going to join me actually on the Tuesday edition of my show on Pyramid One Network. So that's on at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can go to my website, aboutoneness.com, and you can get the link to the Pyramid One Network. But he'll be on with me again because there's a whole – different group of people that haven't heard this conversation and um, I'd like to have I'm going to do some stuff between now and then and maybe we could talk about it on Tuesday. Yeah. So, that would be great, Karen. Yeah. Through some of your stuff cause, um, because uh, that would be great to talk about your actual experiences with, with trying ah. to sell, you know. And, and you'll be helping people by doing that, Karen. Like you care a lot about people because you're doing this show. So this is an opportunity to help others by helping yourself. It's really amazing. Yeah. No.